Okay, now let's look at another example, and this is a kind of interesting one. Here I have taken a circuit and I have selected the ground ahead of time in such a way that I have got a voltage source that is spanning two nodes, but neither one is defined. I do not know the voltage of either one of those by inspection. So the voltage source isn't connected to ground on one end, it's connected between nodes V1 and V2. So in this case, let's find V1 and V2. Let's calculate those node voltages. How are we going to do that? Well, this is no different than the problem we just did a minute ago. We're going to use exactly the same technique. Let's go through and, in this case, Let's select current directions and let's write the KCL equations for those two nodes. So in this case, I'm going to pick this current direction through the 30 ohm resistor, that current direction through the 8 ohm resistor, pick those voltage drops according to the pass assign convention across those resistors. <coughs> and now, I'm going to write a KCL equation for V1 and V2, but if I'm going to do that, I cannot forget to also define the current variable for that voltage source. I'm going to call that I sub S. So I've got I sub S flowing through that 6 volt source. Once again, you do not need to follow the passive sign convention when you're solving for a source, only for a resistor. So in this case, we write our KCL equations for the V1 node, 2 amps is equal to V1 over 30 plus I sub S, and that's very critical. If I forget I sub S, I'm never going to be able to solve this problem. For V2, I sub S flowing in must be equal to V2 over 8 plus 1.5. Current going in equal current going out. And in this case, I have to include that IS term in both equations. Now, I still can't solve. I've got V1, V2, and IS. I've got three unknowns. Okay, I need another equation. What have I forgotten? Well, there are no dependent sources, so there's no dependent source variable. Ah, but there is a voltage source. There's a constraint. What's my constraint equation? V2 minus V1 is 6 volts. Previously, with the defined node, I just wrote the constraint right on the diagram because I knew that one end of the voltage source was grounded. But in this case, I can't do that. So I'm just going to write the constraint. V2 minus V1 is equal to 6. Three equations, three unknowns. Now, if I solve, what I'm going to get is that V1 is equal to minus 1.58 volts. V2 is equal to 4.42 volts and IS is equal to 2.05 amps. And there's my solution. Okay, this is really no different than the technique we looked at before. It's really the same methodology, only this time the voltage source was connected between two undefined nodes. This leads to a concept which uh, you will see in a lot of textbooks where in many cases, the textbook almost kind of makes it look as if you have to use this technique or this concept. And that's the concept of the supernode. Turns out, this is really a supernode problem. What is a supernode? A supernode exists when two nodes are connected together by a voltage source and both of the nodes are undefined.
So when two undefined, and this is essential, when two undefined nodes are connected by voltage source, we have a supernode. I want to emphasize, if you have one end of a voltage source connected to ground, that is not a supernode because that node is known. That's zero volts. It's a known value. But if they're both unknown, then we've got a supernode. And in fact, that is the situation we have right here. V1 and V2 combine together to form a supernode. Or you'll just sometimes see it abbreviated as SN, a supernode. They're linked together. Why is a supernode important? Well, because KCL holds for a supernode. Let's write the KCL equation for that supernode, for that entire group together, those two nodes. So in this case, the supernode equation is two amps going in is equal to V1 over 30 plus V2 over 8 going out. plus 1.5 amps. There's my supernode equation. I've got two equations, or pardon me, I've got one equation, two unknowns, excuse me. So I've got one equation, two unknowns, still need another equation. Well, I still need that constraint. The constraint says that V2 minus V1 is equal to 6. Two equations, two unknowns. I can now solve and I get the same answer for V1 and V2. Notice what's different. I never use the IS variable. In fact, what is that supernode equation? Well, if you look at this, look at this V1 and V2. If I substitute and eliminate the IS term, then this supernode equation is just the linear superposition of V1 and V2. So this is derived from the V1 plus V2 KCL equations with the IS term eliminated by substitution. So I actually have the same math. All I've done here is I've eliminated an equation and eliminated a variable in order to, get the, in order to solve the problem. That is fundamentally what a supernode is, a supernode equation and a supernode problem. I've got a voltage source spanned that spans two unknown node voltages. I just can combine them together into a single supernode and write that equation. Now I point this out because many textbooks will make it seem as if a problem like this has to be solved with a supernode, and it is not. The supernode is optional. The supernode concept is optional. You can always go through and just define the current variable through the voltage source and just write these three equations like I did before. So I always tell students this. A supernode will make the problem a little bit easier, but it is never mandatory. If you don't feel comfortable using it or writing the supernode equation, then don't. There's no need to do so. But if you are com comfortable and confident, it can save you a step or two and simplify and eliminate a few extra variables if, you're, if you take a supernode. Get rid of an extra variable for every supernode equation. So just a nice little trick to keep in mind, but you can always, always 
solve a problem like this and never have to worry about what a supernode is. And I just want to emphasize that on any exam that I would ever give, I will never ask you to use a supernode to solve the problem because you can always do it this way without the supernode. And if that's the way you want to do it, fine, but if you want to use a supernode, then that is fine too. Okay? So this kind of wraps up everything that we have done in, uh, in nodal analysis. Gives you all the basic concepts. Uh, I do urge you to read the summary of nodal analysis, the little document that I have put on Brightspace. You will find that covers a lot of other little interesting edge cases that you might want to take a look at to improve your understanding of nodal analysis. All right, next time we will begin on our second major analysis technique. We will look at mesh analysis.